Hello, my friends. Good morning, and welcome to yet another morning live show. It is Jacob Israel, and it is the return of the Crusades. Is that what's going on? We're going to find out, because we have so many things to discuss. This show is packed, people. I hope you're all doing super fantastic. It's a... uh, I know that things are a little stressful right now, and uh, I'm going to try to help with that. I may not help with that because there's so much stuff that's stressful to talk about that you may, uh, I don't know, we're going to see. Do me a favor, let me know in the uh, live chat how you're all doing, if you can hear me okay, and if everything's going great. Take a look at that thumbnail. This is how we start every show off. It's, uh, it's one of those days. It's definitely one of those days. This is the month of September has been a very strange one, for sure. I'm so glad that all of you are here. As per usual, you've all hit the like button. That makes it so easy for me. We're gonna get we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna get right into it. We know that the queen has passed. If you saw my last show about the uh, Stone of Destiny, King Charles is about to be coronated. That's great. I'm glad you got that show in because this is going to build off of that, which is why I aired that first, even though I had this one waiting in the wings. Did you know that the day that the queen passed was the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary? It's very interesting. Because we've been talking about on the show, by we I mean me to all of you, we've been discussing all of the Mary worship, the Queen of Heaven worship, how this is connected to Artemis, Anana, and other things. We're going to get into that a little bit later in the show because this has some otherworldly <laughs> parts to it that is really kind of freaky. But before we do that, we got to talk about what's going on in the world. There's like a holy war going on. I said it was in the name of the beast. <laughs> Because perhaps these factions, who knows? Who knows? But there is 100% something going on between... There's a power struggle. Whether that's coming from one side or the other, we don't know which way it's going, but we do know there's something, something, something is amiss. So the nativity of the, uh, the, Virgin, the Virgin Mary. This is uh, very strange. Stranger still was, this was the music that was played basically in a, uh, in celebration of her life and everything else. It was also played, this is, the song is Nimrod, by the way. It was also played uh, when she was, you know, coronated and when she became queen. Nimrod. I don't know if you know who Nimrod is. Nimrod is, uh, he's the dude who built the, uh, the Tower of Babel. The son of Cush, he was the, uh, the grandson of Noah. His name literally means, let us rebel. Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. This is strange. All of this stuff is strange. We're going to talk about secret societies. We're going to talk about secret orders. We're going to talk about the Knights Templar. The Baphomet. This is very strange indeed. So that was what was played in celebration of the queen, was Nimrod. Strange. Very strange. Stranger still, because of course we know that the Tower of Babel is symbolic of Babylon, this beast system. How in Revelation it says that Babylon is fallen, fallen indeed. Before all of this stuff started happening with the Hey, look at the bird. It's a crane. This went down in Russia. They burned, literally burned to the ground in effigy of the Tower of Babel. An artist did this. I talked about it on the show. Weird, right? Because it almost seems like where one is honoring Nimrod and this system, Another side seems to be tearing it down, saying that this is a holy war indeed. And we know that the leader of the Ruskies believes this is some kind of a holy war. Is it? 
Well, you would certainly see a lot of symbolism going down. Ironically, we did talk about the Commonwealth Games. Who here in the live chat remembers the Commonwealth? Oh, we got a lot of super chats already. Thank you, Charm. Thank you, uh, Yashua is King. And of course, Yashua is King. And I appreciate Ariel. Thank you very much. Very nice to see everybody here. Thank you all for taking the time to hit that like button. It really helps, okay? Especially with what we're going into very shortly. We want to get as many people here as we can this uh, what is this? Is this Monday? Is this Tuesday? I don't even know what day it is. I don't even know what day it is. One show is going into the next. It just seems like it's going by so fast. The Commonwealth Games, this was a big deal. Do you remember this beast? We'll look at its heads filled with names. We talked about the symbolism of this and how it could be connected to, of course, you know, the beast in, in Revelation and the, uh, the beast that the woman rides, the scarlet colored beast, which the woman did ride at the end of this. And then they all held up their little shards of glass. And we spoke about this. There's another reason why I'm bringing this up. Because do you know who actually closed, closed the Commonwealth Games? Ozzy Osbourne. His latest album, I believe, is Osmosis. Somebody emailed me that, and I just that just popped into my head. I forgot who it was. Osmosis is pretty interesting. You know, Osmosis is kind of like you learn through Osmosis. I don't really need to study. I just learn. I just suck it up. I just become. Well, The Raging Bull and Ozzy Rock in Style. He performed at the closing ceremony. Guess what song he was singing? Iron Man. Not just that, though. He also sang a song, Paranoid. Very weird. His Patient 9 video, I'll see if I can pull it up later, which is really disturbing, where he turns into the devil and all this, and it's very uh, spooky, uh, has the trident in it, very proudly displayed. But Ozzy, at the Commonwealth Games, Iron Man. Iron Man. Nimrod. Very strange. Nimrod, the king of Shinar, the most powerful bowman in the land. A hunter, much like Artemis. Some people think that Nimrod is possibly an alien. <laughs> Some people think these things. I, you know, I'm not saying whether that's the case or not, because what do I know? But I do know he was very powerful. And he had a huge role in the development of the world after the flood. Now, that's symbolic because the flood happened, ready? This is now we're coming into after the flood. Now, this is where all the, the mess is picked up. I believe that the, the virus of the crown was much like a flood. The dragon flood of the earth, if you will. And here we are. So now what? Is Nimrod going to once again build a stronger and more iron-fisted kingdom that we all need to uh, worry about? Hmm. Don't know. He was the founder and the high priest of the Babylonian system. And guess what he invented for himself? The name Pontiff. Does that sound familiar? We know anybody else named a Pontiff? When King Charles gave his speech after the Queen passed, one thing that stuck out to me, that really stood out to me, was his mention of the church and his responsibility to the church. I don't know if a lot of you understand this or not, but to rule, they want to rule everything, okay? They want to rule the economy. They want to rule... Everything. Society, they want to rule your faith, how you think, how you believe. So him reaffirming his responsibility to the Church of England, it's interesting, especially since you have, you know, uh, Vladimir saying that this is, you know, a holy war, which is going on. It's all interesting. I actually hear, let me see if I can pull this up. On uh, Twitter, I shared something. Oh, that's fun. There's uh, Eddie. Eddie shared this with me. I saw it today. He says, uh, Jacob's Pillow, a day after your vid. That's Love Yourself, The Rock, holding The Rock, get it? But yes, I, 
I think that is interesting. I said, who knows? Who knows? We got to go over here, and let's just take a look. Let's see if I have transferred over it properly. Um, I still don't know how to operate Twitter. Isn't that something, huh? Let's see. How do I get to my page? There we go. Where I can play what the king had said. There's a coronation stone for all of you who missed it. That's Jacob's pillar. We're going to get into that in a little while. But here it is right here. Let's, let me just uh, play this for you. Family of realms of whose talents, traditions, and achievements I am so inexpressibly proud have prospered and flourished. Our values have remained and must remain constant. The role and the duties of monarchy also remain, as does the sovereign's particular relationship and responsibility towards the Church of England the church in which my own faith is so deeply rooted. In that faith and the value... It is a big deal when monarchs say we're going to start to look into this. Now, we know that there is the, uh, some people call Chrislam, where they're bringing Judaism, Christianity, and, um, and Islam together. This is a big deal. Trump was the uh, guy who basically kind of Got all this ball rolling, and very shortly we are going to see a big collaboration with these world religions in, in a, a, a pretty mighty way. Control is what Nimrod was pretty much about, ruled with an iron fist, hence Iron Man. So we may see some great control happening, which, look, I said for a long time that that was what was coming i was concerned that around this month that this this is when this would all go down and the queen passing is a uh, is a telltale sign that there's something going on what else is kind of freaky is the fact that look at what <laughs> king charles is kind of his nickname is king charles the cashless very disturbing stuff Disturbing because uh, everything's run on cash right now, right? We have a little bit of uh, freedom, it seems. You know, if we have a uh, lemonade stand for our kids, we don't have to worry too much. I mean, I think there's a law that you don't have to pay tax on anything under 12000 anywhere in the States. But without cash, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no privacy to anything that you do anymore. Thank you, Lauren Sawyer. Thank you so much. Lauren sent me some really cool stuff called the Digesta Cure. I, uh, I got to look into it because I really have been having problems with my, uh, my stomach. I just haven't been able to get around to it. I'm excited to try it, though. Thank you, Lauren, for everything. Yeah, this is, um, this is not probably what a lot of people are hoping for. You know, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to worry about, uh, about this right now with everything else. But this is King Charles is the guy. He is Mr. Hit That Button. Now is the time. He even gave a big speech where he said, because of the virus of the crown, we need to take advantage of this. We need to change everything. In fact, he called for a warlike footing. Warlike. We need to mobilize armies for the private sector, basically. Governments of the world, they need to step aside. Somebody needs to be in charge. And whoever that person is, Maybe it's him, maybe it's somebody else. We don't know. In his speech, he was a little vague. He did use the word he. Some people say that he was talking about the, the Antichrist. You know, of course, on, on the channel, I've explained many times what it is. It's not so simple as to say it's one man, but sure, yes, we will have one man who will be pretty horrible. So for those that don't understand that the war is within, they'll have something to, uh, they'll have an example of what not to be. A warlike footing. At COP26, the Climate Change Summit. I actually have, um, I have a clip here. Let me see if I can pull it up. But before I do that, let me show you something else. Warlike footings. 
Okay, so last year, I want you to take a look at that medallion around his uh, his neck there. Because he, he's been the big proponent of, you know, we need to, everything needs to be green. Do you remember what the green horse of the apocalypse is? <laughs> everything needs to be green. We're in it. We're in it. Vladimir Zelensky, I did that show. I said, you know, is, is he the green horse of the apocalypse? Because his name means um, green new world ruler. And he always dresses in green. And we've talked about it. And then, of course, we saw four horsemen everywhere, Beyonce with the horses. And and it's just, you know, so you, I get these um, well, little urges to, to, to kind of look into things or little ideas that kind of pop into my head. Like I'll be, I'm look. I was looking for one speech, and I found this speech, and I said, "Why does he have a scorpion around his neck? Like it's a medal, like it's an award or an honor or a title." Scorpions, scorpions, not a great thing in Scripture. Although, I do want to point out that God says, "What kind of God is God?" That if you ask for, you know, bread, is He going to give you? something else he's going to give he's going to give you a score if you ask for an egg is he going to give you a, a, a serpent right is he if you ask for bread is he going to give you a, a serpent or or a scorpion is he going to give you a stone that's not what god is but a scorpion in the book of revelation in, in chapter 9 spooky it talks about a day a time when locusts Basically, uh, you know, and the they're, and these scorpions, they have these scorpion tails. They come out and they uh, they sting men, cause them to uh, want to seek death, but they can't find death. We're going to get into that because it's really spooky. Speaking of which, let's take a look at Ozzy's song. If you look at the end of the song, right, very last paragraph, and so as you hear these words telling you now of my state. I tell you to end your life. I wish I could, but it's too late. Ain't going to be no end to uh, the lives of those that are suffering from the hands of the scorpion. Weird. Here it is right here. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on earth and were given power like that of the scorpions of earth. Locusts that devour the harvest. Locusts. That aren't great locusts, plagues that were like given the power of the scorpions. There's King Charles wearing a scorpion around his neck. It's very strange. But here's the part that I just thought was interesting. And of course, I don't want to get anybody freaked out <laughs> because I'm not saying that this is going to be the case. There is, okay, so there's a belief out there, and I'm not saying that it's true. It's not something that I personally believe in, that there's a war being fought in the spiritual world, and that God needs the souls of the righteous from here, and that there's a big plot underway with the evil people in the world and the ones that are on the other side of the coin to keep everybody stuck here as slaves so they can't go to, you know, be part of that holy war so that the tide will turn. I am not a big promo, uh, proponent of that idea. Of that. I think it's a cool theory. So that would then lead many to believe that there's a plan underway to keep people like zombies, to keep them immortal, to have them live forever. I don't know if you've heard this theory. It's terrifying. Once again, I don't buy into it, but who knows, right? Who knows? <laughs> I'm talking about it for whatever reason. But there is in Scripture this, and once again, I look at Revelation as the revelation of Christ in us. That's what it is. It was the revelation of Jesus Christ to John when he was on the aisle, when he was writing towards the end of his life. It was, um, he had a revelation of it. He had a, a, a of, of the day that Christ appeared to him and how it appeared to him. So he uh, speaks of this fifth angel that sounds... And it was the star that fall from heaven. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss, the, 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 the pit of the abyss. I don't like the, the new international version. I don't know why I clipped this. When he opened the abyss, smoke warmed him. Basically, the abyss is it's a, it's a bottomless pit, has no foundation. So it's, it, it, think of it as a black hole. 
that black hole that we have a picture of opened up a while back. I did shows about it saying, is this the pit that was opened up? And out of that black hole, it belched up like a th after being shut down for a thousand years, it belched out all of this, these particles and everything else in the, uh, the display that they used. They did a little animation to um, express this. It looked like a bunch of smoke coming out of this bottomless pit, which was the black hole, which then shot through huge, made a, like a hole through um, the constellation of Fucus, which is a picture of the serpent bear, the man wrestling with the snake or the dragon. So this abyss opens up and out of it comes these locusts that were given to power like scorpions. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant of the tree, but only those people, I want you to listen to me, only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. The tail in scripture, because a scorpion would sting with the tail, is, look at it, spelled T-A-L-E. It's a lie. Lies hurt. We're being lied to on a regular basis. Now, during those days, people will seek death, but they will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. So, this is where a lot of people get this idea from. What's weird is, you know, I did a lot of shows about who remembers all the jellyfish? Who remembers all the jellyfish that I talked about for so long? Does anybody remember them? Yeah, where, uh, where I did the goofy things about the jellyfish and other things, right? Okay. Right now, there's an immortal jellyfish that they've mapped the uh, the the uh, the genome on. A couple of people sent this to me. I was aware of it. I did shows on it a while ago. I knew that they were working on it, um, but they just finally had mount, announced that they, you know, they, maybe they can reverse aging. And if you remember correctly, I just talked about Jared Kushner speaking about this, speaking about how well we're the last generation to die. That's, I mean, that's, that's weird to say we're the last generation to die and then he wants to stay in good shape because he doesn't want to be stuck, I guess, looking like an old man for the rest of his life. I don't know. All of these things, even though they sound crazy and far-fetched, nothing really is that crazy and far-fetched, especially for the elites, the ones that have the power of the scorpions. So Jared Kushner is getting into uh, great shape for eternal life. All of these things, believe it or not, kind of lead to something else. If you've ever heard, have you ever heard of the Holy Grail, right? Now, if you watched my last show about the Stone of Destiny, you understand that many say that that's the Holy Grail. That's what everybody was looking for, this stone. Now, what I, I don't think that I mentioned in there is the fact that many say that it could be extraterrestrial and it could be some kind of a some kind of tech like a meteorite or something that fell down and for whatever reason Jacob uh back in the day stumbled upon it slept on it got superpowers had a vision and started to understand heavenly things I don't know if that's the case but there's this idea and for many years people have been searching for this holy grail the holy grail which would lead to eternal life now ironically the Holy Grail's in the news right now. Zelensky just deployed the uh, the Holy Grail, a war tactic. And, uh, you know, it's this is a thing. This is a thing. It's, it's concerning on a lot of levels because when you start, see now, this is hopefully, let's take a look at how many people are here. Um, okay, good. We're almost, we're almost at 2,000 people. That's great. Thank you. Yes, please hit the like and thank you to uh, Dylan. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that because this is where, this is where the show takes a, a strange turn. So King Charles, the scorpion, let's see if I can, um, let's see if I can pull up. Let me go over to my display transfer over here and pull something up. If I could find it, give me one second. Here we go. Bank of England's new money system 
is going to be rolled out. Okay, so, uh, you know, you have the uh, Queen's image on the money. That all needs to change. Do you see where I'm going with this? What better time to go cashless like King Charles the cashless than right now? You do know that a lot of people are pulling their monies out. You got a lot of weird things going on. You got banks that are like saying, you got to pull it all in. We got to do this. We got some banks are saying you can't use $50 bills anymore, $20 bills. It's getting weird. A while ago, they were running out of change. I said, why are all the Chase branches closing? I, I used to have a, a Chase down the street. Then I had a Chase, you know, um, like a couple miles away. That one closed. One after the other, all closing. Now I got to drive like 10 miles if I want to take cash out. Wonder why that is. Well, here's the news. The death of the queen has kickstarted a big time change in money. Money and stamps are set to change. The Bank of England staff wish to express their heartfelt condolences to the royal family following the news of the death of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II. It was with profound sadness that I learned the death of Her Majesty. He goes on and on and on to say, I'll uh, summarize for you the money that you have right now, if you're in England, it's going to be worth something for a period of time. <laughs> and it won't anymore. Just, they didn't, they didn't really give you uh, much more instruction than that. But if you're over the pond, you got some big changes coming. But not just there, everywhere. I know it. I know it. Not just because Pope Francis also instructed all the Vatican entities to uh, move their funds to the Vatican Bank by September 30th. That's in this month as well. I know a lot of people are worried about um, the coming days. There's a video going around. A lot of people have covered this where um, I believe it's a Germany in Germany. One of the, uh, I guess, speakers said. The uh, 24th will be a day that we will remember blah, blah, blah. 666, that's what blah, blah, blah means. Next time you say it, remember where it came from. And <laughs> called Dean. <sighs> everything we know, everything we've been taught, right? All the hand things that we used to think were okay are actually 666. So he, uh, he gave this little speech and he said uh, on the 24th, oh, but he really just misspoke. He was talking about the Ukraine war. He, he should have said February. So um, really when we see these things, we really should just, before we put it out, because it's great, I, I wanted to include it in the show, just do, do a little bit of digging. You know, do a little bit of digging. Listen to it in context. See what he was talking about. He was talking about the Ukrainian war, and he was saying, well, we all remember what happened that day. So there you have that. But I still think something bad's going to happen. I do. Uh, I mean, especially if the Pope's saying this, right? The world is shaken by the risk of this. It's a... um. You know, it's a very stressful time. Very stressful time. And why wouldn't it be, especially with uh, all that's going on? But I think it's going to get a lot more stressful. Let me um, let me just play you a little bit of what um, King Charles said. Now, notice when he comes up here, he slips. I think that that's... Um, I think that this is very telling. The stumble is a, uh, it's, it's a very spiritual thing, a stumble, just so you know. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us just how devastating a global cross-border threat can be. Climate change and biodiversity loss are no different. In fact, they pose an even greater existential threat. I mean, you got to really listen to what he's saying. It's very spooky, a warlike footing. And, and you have a lot of climatologists that are going to say that this isn't necessarily true, that this is just something that happens all the time. All of this stuff is just totally sus to the extent that we have to put ourselves on what might be called a warlike footing. Having myself had the opportunity of consulting many of you over these past 18 months, I know you all carry a heavy burden 
Well, listen, I'm sure you're all bored listening to him. I'm bored listening to him. The uh, the bottom line is is that there's going to be there's a war, the warlike footing. We have to marshal the world together. We got to get our forces together. All of this stuff is just it's just a little much, right? Because everybody just kind of want, kind of wants to live their life. But I don't know if you felt it. The pressure that's being put on people to just get by. It's getting harder and harder and harder to just make do, right? Just to just make do. I still haven't gotten myself a car uh, because, you know, with, with college and with there's so many things going on and everything is so much more expensive that it's just the pressure is on. Like I said, it was like the Python slowly but surely. I said this for us back from 2015. And I kept saying every year, I kept telling everybody, it's coming, it's going to be slow, but it's going to get to a point where you're going to be like, I can't take it anymore. That's the point we're at. Sadly, that's the point we're at. And it seems like there are two sets. Uh, There's a, a power struggle going on, whether it's real or not, I don't know. That's the thing, because is it like wrestling where... You know, the bad guys and the good guys, they're all in on it t- together. Or is there really a big, is, is there a big holy war going on? You know, is this a war that is under the cover of something else? Or is this just the whole system coming together and finally taking charge? We don't know. I hope that God is working because I believe God is always working. And I think that He's kind of opening our eyes to what's going on. Now, this is where the show gets strange. So, a lot of people talked about this, but not a lot of people actually told you what this meant. The Pope opened this door. It hadn't been opened in a long, long, long time. The holy door of the Celestinian pardon in L'Aquila. After leading a prayer in the square of the Basilica of, who's that? Santa Maria. That's right. Santa, it's all about the Queen of Heaven. In the central Italian city of L'Aquila, Pope Francis presided over the right of opening the holy door of the Basilica as part of a pardon. Do you know what a pardon is so back in the day this is where you get this idea of eternal torture where you're tortured endlessly that may end up being here if that's the case if there's some plan to keep everybody here you may end up being stuck here i'm not saying that's going to be the case because i think that nothing can uh, keep us from the love of god nothing scriptures say nothing nothing in the earth above the earth beneath the earth in the sea nothing can separate us from the love of god it's an impossibility except for our uh, own you know meathead like thinking but then god has a way of dealing with that too it's called correction and correction stinks you either go to christ to be crushed down your humility you become a humble person from a proud person or you get stomped and and crushed down the dust yeah what my way or the highway god says and uh, you'll end up with God's way in the end. But this door, this pardon, means you're pardoned from sin. Hmm. How can anybody pardon somebody from sin? Well, back in the day, they had this this uh, thing called an indulgence, where you'd basically pay to get your like if you had family members that weren't part of the Holy Catholic Church, and uh, you know they would say, oh, you you better you better pay it. They're going to be tortured endlessly. You better give us some money. And we'll give you a little piece of paper and say they're good to go. It's just, man, it's so corrupt, right? So this is sort of like that. <laughs> this is sort of like that. And, and this is where it gets really weird. Okay, so, the, of course, this is um, at the holy door. The holy door of Santa Maria. Some people say uh, Mary is also uh, known as Artemis and Anana, Queen of Heaven. Ishtar, other things. I think there was a literal Mary. It is what it is. But they have these, this worship of these figures going back even longer than um, the scriptures. So now this is where it's, uh, this is where it gets very interesting because we remembered the bull, right? That big bull. 
at the uh, Commonwealth Games. The Rock, holding the Rock. He has a big bull tattooed on his uh, his arm. I know because I used to be his writer. The celebration was established by Pope Celestine in 1294 with the issue of the papal bull, also known as the Bola de Pardon, the Bull of Forgiveness. You know what? You know who the bull is? The bull is Baal. Baal. Baal Moral Castle, where they just were. Some other bad people were photographed at the cabin there, too. A lot of people shared that with me. I have a picture of it. I don't think I'm going to just think of the, you know, the really bad people that we've heard about, the ones that took their lives and the ones whose client list has not been revealed to the world. Well, there's pictures of them. It looks almost identical to the cabin cabin that is on that property where we have that big pyramid. That's besides the point. Baal, the bull. The Bull of Forgiveness, in which he grants an indulgence to anyone who, listen to this, confesses and communicates and visits the door of Santa Maria. The event is a precursor of the universal woe. Look at that word. Jubilee. Who just had a jubilee? Who just did the queen? All of these ceremonies coming together, but you haven't even heard the... This is, this is where it gets weird. This is where it gets weird. So, that sounds... Okay, that's, that's strange, but here's where it gets stranger. Do you know what you got to do to get this pardon? Boniface added an extraordinary indulgence, which up to 1294 was granted to those who left... To fight in the Crusades. What? The Crusades? The Crusades you mean with the Knights Templar? You know, the Knights Templar, which by the way, I, um, they fought in the Crusades. Here's, here's, uh, here's some I- interesting information about them. Their distinctive white mantles with their red cross. They were among the most skilled fighting units in the Crusades. Not anymore, because now they look like a bunch of old people, but they still got power. I actually tweeted about that. They made up 90% of the members. They managed a large economic infrastructure throughout Christian. They were the first corporation. They handled all the money. They were powerful, very powerful. The Knights Templar. Now, why is this a thing? Why? Well, because the algorithm, for whatever reason, through this image, all the way through, uh, you know, the the annals of uh, Twitter, Alan West, who is dressed like a, uh, I don't know, like a goofball. The Crusades have begun, I wrote. The Knights were in charge of finance. That's why most today couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. But the, I mean, that's the truth. You know, like if I showed you some of these knights, let me just see if I can enlarge the picture for you, just to give you an idea. They're not like, uh, <laughs> a lot of them are very old, you know, look in the background. Some of them have canes. Well, there you see that, that, uh, that, that, that cross that he's wearing. Some say it looks all like the, uh, the, 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 the satanic cross, which some say is on the Oreo cookie. I don't have that for you, but. This is strange. It's strange that this guy is making it official that he has been invested into the sovereign military order of the Temple of Jerusalem, the Knights Templar. What? I knew they were still around, but like, like really? He took an oath to protect Christians in a holy land. It's all about finance. And you got the Pope moving money. You got people moving money. You got Charles de Cassius moving money. You got R- Russia burning down the Tower of Babel, calling it a holy war. The Crusades are on. And what were the Crusades over? They were over Jerusalem, supposedly. Also, the Crusades had something to do with the Stone of Destiny, or as others would call it, the Holy Grail. Crusades happening now. A holy war happening now, incognito. Very strange. 
But stranger still, take a look at this. Here's a breadcrumb for you. I was giving out little breadcrumbs. Opening that door of the Pope, the Pope opening that door, okay? This is a piece of the puzzle. This event is a harbinger. Do you know what a harbinger is? Harbinger is like a sign and it's like a warning of the general jubilee of the Catholic Church. Jubilee. It's a holy war in the name of the beast. Remember what I told you, put your trust in the Lord, buckle up, turn off the fear tactics of TV, be kind, loving, turn from evil and their ways. Time for hashtag Christ mode. That's right. We got to, we got to listen. We can't get so stressed out about these things. We can't get so stressed out about these things, but this is a war. The beast is now making war with that prostitute, that whore that sits on the many waters, that system, that corrupt, perverse system. Another breadcrumb I threw out there on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, will you? It's Jacob Israel 71. Just follow me because I really like um, the short bursts of Twitter. It's, it's easier for me to communicate there. Um, I'm trying to do more on Facebook, but it's, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to keep up. But this is a big one because perhaps this is the war that's going on right now. The angel said to me, the waters you saw where the prostitute sits and the peoples are the peoples, the multitudes, the nations. So that means that this system, this beast system, this, I shouldn't say this beast system. I should say the, uh, the whoredom of this corrupt, perverse system, Hollywood and all that. It's sitting right on the hearts and the minds of all of our children and all of us. This is the war. But you see what happens is the beast and the ten horns you saw begin to hate the prostitute. Now this is where it gets weird. Because you sort of see that happening in the world right here in the States. You got a lot of people. See, it's projected. We're biding our time. I've been saying that, right? It's been projected that perhaps the people that he appoints are not the most moral and upright and holy. Some of them pretty, pretty perverted looking. A lot of them pretty, pretty perverted looking. I'm sure you've seen all of the, uh, the pictures. The, uh, the, the recent one was uh, the guy who's in charge of the monkey, the monkey pox, all of that. So it's like it's almost featured so you have something to look at, kind of like, that's not right. You know, drag shows with children, that's not right. Twerking at a library, reading children's books, that's not right. But the beast becomes angry and makes war against this system. This is why we know that... Um, a world system's taking over and the system that's currently in place is going to be replaced. The beast of the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They'll bring her to ruin, leave her naked. They'll eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to accomplish his purpose. I want to point that out. God's behind this. By agreeing to hand over to the beast their, what kind of authority? Royal authority until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is that great city that rules over the kings of the earth. What great cities do you know perhaps rule over the kings of the earth that are pretty perverse, pretty foul, don't have great rules? I could think of one city near me. I'm not going to show you the picture of the cabin, but I will show you that there is some Oh, Rock put this. I wanted to share this. That's cool. Look at this. Yeah, there you go. There's the uh, a lot of people think that Trump is 100 percent in a secret society. You, you know, Scott, Scotland and all of that. And that he is perhaps maybe a, maybe a Templar as well. You know, maybe a Templar as well, but definitely part of the uh, this this society. Now, why do I say this? Why do I say this? Well. Crusades, they're in the news. You know, this September 10th, the high school film Crusades is making a uh, quite quite a stir. The uh, there was a big time, big time, uh, the Crusades in the Holy Land. New book claims that there was Norman 
dominance of you? I mean, and that's that's very interesting as well. The Crusaders emerge over Salem. When you hear the word Salem, what do you think of? You think of uh, witchcraft, right? The Crusaders emerge from Salem. That's just a uh, that was just like a Catholic, you know, game. I don't know if it was a football game or whatever against the Quakers. Salem is actually in my uh, is in my novel. That's the uh, neighboring town. Um, Bethel is where the uh, thing takes place. The world largest Ouija board was unveiled in Salem. So it seems like things are showing us that there is some like that God has brought the king of the north, if you will. Like I said, the king of the north was coming. The king of the north was coming. I could go back and I could show you. I said all this stuff was going to happen. I just feel like now it's being kicked into high gear. If you've watched me on Twitter, I've been like telling everybody, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Whatever comes, it's going to be okay. We got a lot of interesting things going down this month, and we got a lot of interesting things going down next month. A lot of them. A lot of them. So is this the Crusades? Crusaders? The Crusader Cross? Take a look at that Crusader Cross on... Uh, Homeboy's gun. How about them apples? Who knows this? Who knows this? What's up? What's up with that? How many people are paying attention to what's what's going on in the world? How many people? That's the uh, that's the cross. That's the Crusaders. That's the Knights Templar cross. Did God put it into their heart to come against the? other system that would be behind bars in that picture the whore that sits on the many waters that's in charge right now is that why we see so much so much pushback is that why we see bureaus being used by certain parts of the government when they shouldn't be doing things that are illegal doing things that are corrupt is that why we see this is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? I think God's in charge of it all. And like I said, when I had that weird dream back in the day with, with Trump where I told you, I said he's going to lose the election. It's going to look like he's lost everything, but don't worry, he's laughing his butt off because, and I said, either A, he's in on it, or B, God has a plan. I don't know which it, which it is. I'm hoping that God has a plan. It's kind of hard for me to believe any of that because... You look at a person, pretty corrupt, pretty corrupt. They're all so corrupt. They're all so corrupt. Where are the, where's the moral leadership, Lord? That's what I want to, the moral leadership will come. It'll take some time. It'll take some time. But do you know, do you know who the Crusaders were said to worship? The Crusaders, the Knights Templar. Now this is where it gets even weirder, Okay. The Baphomet. Now, I'm not saying that that's the case. Many say that that was um, just kind of made up to uh, discredit them because uh, the, the king at the time, you know, was uh, wanted to get rid of them because they had so much power and wanted all their wealth. So they started they started all these rumors about how they worship this creature. But could that creature be an alien? <laughs> could it be an Anunnaki? Could it be a demon? That's what many people think it is. Looks a lot like Pan. It's just strange to me that this is all happening at this moment in time. Very strange. Because, of course, the Baphomet we have seen on Trump's Space Force hat. Remember I did a show about that? Weird, right? Not so weird if there's really a thing to this. Not so weird if the Knights Templar and the Baphomet are one, one and the same. Now, little history on the Baphomet. Do you know what it means in code? It's a coded word. And it's a replacement. Like, they have codes where you replace. If you have the first letter, you take the last letter. 
the first letter going the other way. And, and if you put it together, you get the word Sophia, which means wisdom. Wisdom. I'm sharing with you secret stuff that nobody taught me. Stuff that I just stumbled upon. Wisdom. Sophia, which means Sophia, which means wisdom. With this, not only does Bathma become a more androgynous figure, named Sophia is adopted, but do you know, also, some say that the Baphomet comes from the prophet Muhammad. Mehomet, not saying that's the case. That somehow, Baphomet's kind of a code for Muhammad and the knights perhaps fighting for something else, even though they say that they're Christians. It's just weird. The whole thing is weird. I've always thought it was strange. Stranger still was when I was younger and I got that, remember I, in my last show, I talked about the Palanca where I went on this retreat, this Catholic church retreat. I was given a Knights Templar cross. I don't still have it, but I didn't know what it was. It was just weird. It was like they, they handed all that out. Strange, strange. But the history of the Baphomet is uh, very, very spooky. And you know that, of course, it was picked up by Aleister Crowley and the Satanic Temple. The occultist, Aleister Crowley, he adopted it. We just had the Burning Man. All of these things, they, uh, they were said to have gone underground because of King Philip. Look at the cape. That's what uh, Alan was wearing. Alan West, is that his last name? He's now into the holy water to defend the Holy Land. What? What, dude? You haven't been to the gym in a day. <laughs> strange. Strange. All of this. So strange. So is it possible that there is more? Is it possible that there is a secret war going on right now? You got to tell me in the comments section. You got to let me know because something's happening. Something indeed. My next show, I'm going to go into Artemis and I'm going to go into Mary a lot deeper. This show would be too long. Just let you know, there was a, uh, a famous painting about the Virgin Mary with a UFO over it. It's going to be a cool show. You're going to really like it because it has a lot. It, it's kind of like it'll be a, it'll follow this one in step. But the Crusades are in the news. So perhaps the Crusades are going on right now. I don't know. But that's totally sus to me. Especially with all the things that we see happening today. Do you know Nimrod? Nimrod that I, I spoke of? The Tower of Babel that the uh, Pope Francis is calling for the interface at the uh, at the ziggurat that was built. That was built on the Tower of Babel, Nimrod, the ziggurat. That was built on the foundation of what Nimrod built. Something's going down, people. It's exciting. If I were to make any predictions, and I'm not a guy that predicts things, I just kind of speculate, I see a big push towards digital currency. I mean, it's obvious at this point. And I think the queen passing away was a big event. And I think it's going to set off a lot. And I am concerned that Charles is wearing that, that little scorpion thing. I know it was a gift to him. It was given to him. But there's something going on. It's an exciting time to be alive. God is good. Let me just remind you before I go. Let me just remind you of what. Let's see if I can get to it. Let me just remind you of who's in charge. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find it. God's in charge. God's always in charge. If I can't find it, I'll just tell you. <laughs> it's in the book. It's in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 19. He put it in the heart. He put it in the heart of the uh, those rulers of the uh, beast system to attack. 
and to destroy. And that's what's going on now. In my opinion, you're going to see uh, you're going to see a lot of stuff go down. I said that was going to happen. Handmaid's Tale being a, a good example. It was coming. I've talked about all these weird things years ago. And then to see them come to pass. So incredibly interesting to me. All right. So let me um, let me just uh, let me pull the uh, thumbnail up and let me say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for coming. We have almost 3,000 people watching. That is, uh, that is, um, that's a record for me. And I'm grateful to all of you. I love you all so much. If I missed your super chat, forgive me. Shoot me an email and I will, uh, I will thank you properly. Um, I love you all so much. I hope you have the best day. I hope that this doesn't stress you out. If anything, it should ex- encourage you. Like crusades happening again. Look at that. Happening again. You got the war on all sides. You know, what's, who's, who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? God is the good guy. Working it all together for our good. And there's nothing that can stop what's coming. Storm, it's time to just weather it. Just time to weather it. Remember, he sealed us. Can't kill us. Only we can make mistakes and do things to ourselves. So be smart. Follow your heart. If you think something's wrong... And they say, do this or go here. And you feel like that doesn't seem right. Trust it. Pray. Say, Lord, give me strength. Give me direction. Let me know which way to go. I don't want to make another mistake. I don't want to be led down the wrong path. Forgive me. Forgive us, Lord. We need to ask for forgiveness for all the things that we do that are not godly, that are rooted in this world. Forgive us for worshiping this system. For crying when, you know, we see this terrible system crumble around us and wanting it to stand. When you have a better day, you have a better thing, you have a better way for us all. It's just it's change. It's hard. But God's going to do it regardless. Doesn't need us to do it. So just sit back, go along for the ride. You're going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. God's going to be okay, even if it doesn't look that way. Nothing can stop what God has planned for us. Nothing. They make their plans, but God directs the steps. I love each and every one of you. Have the best day ever. And uh, do me a favor, like this show, leave a comment. It helps. Share the video around if you think it's um, important and you think it'll help somebody. If you want to get yourself an I Am A Witness shirt, There's a link in the description below for the, uh, you just go to the video and on the bottom, you just click on a link. You can go down to the description. There's links for everything. There's the Jacob's Ladder store. You can get a copy of my novel, which is behind me over here. Um, And I'm starting the audio book very shortly because so many of you are asking for it and it makes me so happy. Check out the reviews. Oh my goodness, almost a thousand reviews. I never dreamed. No, I did dream. I just never, uh, just never thought it would happen so soon. All right. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.